So, uh, first of all, we only have a short time, I know, but can you maybe tell us how did you begin your journey and did you ever think that it will go this far? Uh, 30 years ago, I was uh, a computer uh, science student. That's how it began. And if we are short on time, that's basically it. Uh, 30 years later, we have this nice company. I think there are a lot of students with the computer at home. I don't think many of them will be uh, the heads of a conglomerate. Well, we first just figure out how to do search and combine it with uh, knowing of the language you're searching in. And that's how we became unique on our market. And then after being a search company for like 15 years, we became like a company of everything. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> we became a conglomerate. So maybe you can tell us, uh, how do you think all the fields that uh, you, you're involved in are connected? Uh, well, we're a technology company in the essence. Uh, we know how to move the electrons. And now, in addition to that, we know how to move the atoms. We were moving bits and bytes, uh, and we created a lot of nice technologies from search to self-driving, and now it's bro it brought us to moving real things in the world. We are now one of the largest logistics company uh, on our market, and he as well. Okay, unlike uh, the American companies, Yandex started approaching the uh, uh, Western markets only recently. Why? Uh, we actually, we were spoiled. Uh, in the first 20 years of our history, when, we, when you live in Israel, when, when you're a technology company in Estonia, uh, if you are the best in the world, what do you do? You serve the other markets. You cannot stay just in Israel. Uh, we were a little bit spoiled. We had a big market under us. We lived in a big market, which... Uh, actually waited to be developed. So a lot of effort uh, of ours went to developing tools for this specific market. And we were so good that we, we openly competed with all the global companies and survived, <laughs> not only survived actually, yeah, we were called the Google of Russia, the Uber of Russia, the Amazon of Russia, whatever. Uh, but we were focused just on that market because it it gave us a lot of uh, uh, business, first of all, and a lot of things to improve, so that we were focused on it. But now, we're so big there, but we should not be growing there anywhere, anymore. We need to find something else, and that's why I'm looking everything we can, any market we can apply our technologies from our market. So we have technologies where, which have world class, we believe. We applied it for, to one market. We were very successful. We know the things, how to apply these technologies to real markets. And we decided about ourselves, okay, so we are not a global company. And we just have one market, but we may become a trans-local company. We can go market by market, applying our great technologies to great new markets. Like trans-local is a very nice definition. But in Russia, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't have a lot of competition. And in the in Western... Russia? Yes. Oh, we have all the competition you can imagine. We compete. You, you cannot name a company which is a competitor of Google and survived and beat it. Actually, we have 60% of the market share. They have 30% of the market share in search. You, well, there is just few companies who competed with Uber and still survived. Uh, we. I don't know. We are the Spotify. Spotify is a tiny market on. Uh, it's a tiny player on our market. We are, we provide the musical service. We are the largest streaming service now. Well, Netflix exists. But it's one of the players, but we are larger, and so on. So we we have a lot of competition, both from our Russian companies, other players, and the global companies. So we have more competition than anywhere else. I think. So how would you define the, the differences between you and other companies, Western companies like Google, for example? Uh, 
I think we have technologies which are deep, uh, as deep as any, any of them have, and, but we are much more focused on our market. And we, we try to understand how the things work on the market, specific market, like here. We came now to Israel, launched several services. I don't know how many of the people in the auditorium are using 15 minutes grocery delivery, Yam Gudeli. Okay, some. <laughs> okay, if it's, I don't see anything actually from here, but if it's a lot of people, then it's a big success. If not, we have a big potential. <laughs> In other places other than Tel Aviv, for uh, example? This particular model is also launched in uh, London and Paris now, and we are now no, uh, I mean, but in Israel, for example, oh. the, the problem is all the services are in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, and the other places are uh, it starts a bit from, neglected, if uh, I yeah, may. I, okay. We started from Tel Aviv, and now we're going to Gush Dan, and it will be everywhere. If, as we, we just started this year. It, mm -hmm. it just started. So, wait, we will be everywhere. Uh, and we, any service, we, we, we're now doing logistics, we, we, we did taxi, but taxi is a separate story in Israel, too much regulated. We do now uh, working nets. The wind is our business. Uh, what else? Uh, I think a lot of the people here in the audience ask themselves, what is your interest, special interest in Israel? Uh, How's your Hebrew, by the way? Uh, Lot of. <laughs> uh, no, just seven basic. years, man. You've been living here for seven years. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I have uh, family here. My parents are here. Uh, my mother passed away, fortunately, three years ago here. But we're a small market. Uh, no, actually, you, what, this is about being translocal. Yes, Israel looks like a small market if you're a global company. We look at it completely different, uh, differently because, well, the market for us, for, for this kind, we, we, we have many services like search and clouds and other B2B things is separate. Let's talk about city services like taxis, scooters, delivery, logistics, um, e-commerce. Uh, in this all, uh, services work when you, when you analyze the market, you analyze it by cities. You rank the cities of the world. There is maybe a hundred of cities with, which are mega policies, 10 million plus. And if you look at it, on our core market, we have just, well, we have Moscow and a bunch of cities above 1 million. And if you look at Israel, it's yet another great market, great city, actually. See, Israel is a nice city of 10 million people, almost 10 million people. It's going to be 15 soon, I'm sure, uh, because any megapolis today is 15 million. Uh, there is a lot of parks on the north and deserts on the south, but this is, this is one city. There are different regions of the city. There is Tel Aviv, there is... Jerusalem and Haifa, but this is one city, because anything which is connected with less than two hours is one city. So f for us, it's a big megapolis, which is comparable to what we have, and if, and, and this is a very good city because the per capita, the, the, the wealth of the citizens here is much higher than on our core market. So in, uh, in uh, grocery delivery, this 15 minute model, for example, Israel will become, I don't know, maybe half of Russia. This is a tiny market, which is half of Russia. When you look at the map, you see Russia big, but in terms of the services like this, Israel is big. From a nice city, you made us Russia. <laughs> That's very interesting. We're watching now uh, your uh, Yandex delivery, uh, and it's a new service, and now it works where? Well, it's self-driving delivery. Again, we don't do just delivery. Uh, we do self-driving cars for our taxi fleet. In our taxi fleet, we has, have 700,000 cars in 18 markets. Uh, and eventually, and the main problem we have is that nobody wants to be a driver, a taxi driver. So eventually, the taxi drivers should be augmented and then maybe replaced by 
uh, self-driving, and it will take several years to get there. But before we launch these things uh, in delivery, we have a lot of deliveries with millions of deliveries. And again, the main problem is nobody wants to be in courier. I wonder if somebody in this audience wants to be a courier. Maybe not. People don't want to be on these boring jobs. It, and since they're boring, they're easy to automate. And this is the kind of automatization uh, we're doing now. And these are real physical deliveries, which we do in Russia and in America. Uh, when will it be here? Uh, and actually, <laughs> OK, tomorrow I have a meeting with a minister here, and I will tell you. Because it's a I regulation. Think she left. Again, companies are competing in technologies, countries are competing in regulation. Mm -hmm. And Israel, I must say, is lagging behind in self driving regulation. America and China were the first. Russia is one and a half year ahead of Israel now in self driving regulation. The law which was adopted here just last month was adopted in Russia almost two years ago. Germany is ahead now. How can we allow Germany to be ahead of Israel? Let's do, let's do self-driving regulated, <laughs> deregulated. We're just a nice city. The, no, this is a startup <laughs> nation. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for devoting uh, your time. And I think we, will, we could talk for half an hour, but our time is up. So thank you very much again. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.